given an, uh, an exempt report, which obviously I can't talk about in detail, but it did indicate to us, and this was, I think, a couple of years ago, that uh, Arrow Park Course was um, suffering from poor drainage and it was closed for about four to five weeks of the year. And yet you're saying to us it's actually in very good condition and a lot of work has been carried out recently in, in maintenance. Okay. Obviously it's not probably from a purely uh, um, spectator point of view. Can you tell us what improvements seem to be made as far as you're aware? There's been improvements on some of the drainage. certain areas that were very prone to flooding and they improved, improved them quite a lot. This winter is the best winter we've had for years. We lost two weeks in the entire winter this year of playing at weekends. Uh, whereas the, what you refer to a couple of years previous, in fact a year before that, um, we were shut for six or seven weeks continuous because of the weather. The winter was very bad and the course suffered and it, it just could not recover. The water table was too high. But this year, the winter we just had has been one of the best we've had. So we've hardly lost any. Uh, just the two weeks, the first week of the winter and the last week, believe it or not. We've actually lost four games this summer because of, because of the weather. We've actually lost more games this summer than Thank you. That was being political. We all know why we're in austerity or happened in the past. Why we are, why we are here now. I have to do something about it. Having said that, without being cynical, do you think that uh, all this work has been carried out to make it look, the golf course, to be more attractive for the same for saleable reasons? And secondly, do you feel as if the council worked with you more closely, negotiated with you, consulted with you, worked as, as a management team with you, you could make improvements, you could help improve? The economic side of the golf club, which would therefore bring in more members, which would make the golf club stand on its own feet and be in the same position that you are now. Do you think that would help? Yes, I mean, that's what we've say, uh, been saying that in the recent months, as I say, we've seen this improvement in the course, and what happens is more people are playing it now than ever uh, since it's improved. And we're getting three or four applications a month to join the club. We've had club and um, playing members come from High Lake because it was shot last week and they played our course and said there's no um, comparison and we're, there's a strong chance that several of those are now going to transfer and join our club and leave High Lake. But it is, if the course is kept well, yeah. the word gets round. And we get private course members coming to join our club because they look at it, it's a reasonable cost compared to the expense of a private course. And if the course is in good condition, they get the same golf. With your involvement on the world of the golf, do you think that would happen on all the other courses in the same action state? Most definitely. I mean, people are looking for a cheaper way of playing. That's a, that's a value for money. That's a value for money. And if the uh, municipal courses were up to the standards that the private courses have, then there'd be, there'd be no issue to be there. You know, playing the yeah. 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 So, so. Yeah. I have one question for you, Mr. Hickey. Has golf declined at home? And if so, why? Our membership has reduced over the last three or four years. Definitely, we were around the 160, 180 mark at our peak. But because the course went downhill, wasn't maintained very well, and members left and joined private courses. But now, um, the course has picked up, and we're getting these people coming back to us and saying they rejoin our club. Look, I'm not a golfer, and I've read the same things. But well, my understanding from what I've read is that municipal courses charge green fees and private courses have reduced their green fees to make them more attractive to always compete with municipal courses. Would you say that's right? Oh yes, no, 
most definitely. Um, the local course is now there apart, Leeso, Beeston, uh, you can go and play there for 10 to 15 pounds. And we're paying 15 pounds at our park, 10 to 11 pounds a week. It's, they've deliberately reduced their fees to compete, to attract people from the municipal courses to the private course. Anybody else got any questions from the same thing? Yes, Helen? to the roof 
the ceiling, the windows, the internal walls, etc. The quote goes into its thousands, money that the landlord doesn't have. The income had been spent on subsequent holidays during the good years. The landlord now wants rid of the house to somebody, anybody, just to ensure he doesn't have to show the responsibility. When able to sell it, and his income is now zero, but the expenditure continues to flood in. Councillors, the house is back in the golf course. The landlord is little council. For years and years, the tenant has had to suffer unreasonable conditions. The tenant of this property is the users of Bracknell Golf Course and including our club and our members. Bracknell Golf Course is suffering through years of poor maintenance. However, as a business that doesn't invest in the service it offers, golfers will vote with their feet and play elsewhere, rather than paying rising costs for a, for a course on the road for poorer and poorer playing conditions. Around the golf on a weekend, 18 hole golf course on the road now equates to £16.55, more than what you pay already in this week, the private courses, a rise of 75 pence from the previous year. Yet we see a shorter and shorter playing period. Poor maintenance over decades have resulted in the golfing period being much shorter than ever, and therefore income being much less. The SDR, SDRI report from August 2017 on the likely capital expenditure required by the Wood Park clearly demonstrates the reckless neglect that our courses on the road have seen. The report indicates for Brackenwood that no drainage or plans exist about drainage or irrigation systems in place for either site. That Brackenwood needs urgent investments to allow year long playing conditions when the course is shut for months of the year when income cannot be generated. The course is a poorly drained and waterlogged, and the age and irrigation and drainage systems require updating. The level of ongoing maintenance has been poor for a significant period of time. An investment in staffing, ongoing maintenance, training giving keepers, and an effective service level of readers must be implemented. The 18th Green of Bradford has partly been reconstructed and drained but needs repeating, employing high quality materials that were not employed in the first place only years ago. And they need to do that to modern industry standards. The 5th Green had a moisture content of 73.2%. The report says the highest reading the consultant have ever recorded below a turf surface. The 4th and the 16th fairways have significantly waterlogging issues in spring and throughout the winter period to an extent that there is turf dieback. The report also explains that there are no modern drainage systems in place, which makes the problems worse. The irrigation system at Bracken Golf Course is over 30 years old, with no significant wear carried out during this time. It is a view by many golfing members, public and users of the course, as other types of physical activity, that the council have been running the course down for years to enable it to be in a position for development of the properties or the like. As I'm sure you can imagine, the fact that Brackenwood was not included in the private investment scheme, as the Warren and our Park were included in, adds fuel to the fire. The fact that Brackenwood, despite on the council's website stating that it is uh, along the Fulton Recreational Ground, Brackenwood Park, to be protected, but despite this, are under a green belt review. And this is the reason, uh, sorry, and this is the reason for it not being included for the Arab Park on the Warren, just simply doesn't add up. <coughs> Clubs were meant to be consulted on all of the changes to the golf course's operation. However, despite Councillor Brightmore's clearly stating this to our representatives at Brightmore Golf Club at a full council meeting only a few months ago, this hasn't happened, and in terms of Brightmore Golf Club, never has. If a private investment firm sees the opportunity for investment and being a private in business, obviously we would require to make a profit, why then are Widow Council not making the same investment to keep the courses within their control and reaping the benefits of profit for the continued maintenance of its leisure services? Or is Widow Council being the same landlord we have heard about, offload an asset because it can no longer see a way forward? Bracknell Golf Club has supported Will Council and Bracknell Golf Course for over 80 years, and its members over that time have been loyal to the course. I myself have played over the course for 30 years. However, what we are seeing now is members leaving our club, all stating the condition of the course and the rising cost of playing and being a member of the club, their issue. Many are joining local clubs that are more expensive, but they have better playing conditions, far superior to Bracknell. In many people's opinion, 
the courses are no longer providing value for money when looking at their condition, a view also held by myself. Bracken Woodward to host the Municipal Championships on the 2nd of June this year, an event that attracts golfers from all over the Merseyside area and from lots of municipal, uh, municipal clubs. The club had to postpone this due to the complete unplayable conditions of the greens. This will result in lost revenue for the council through green fees and sundries through the shop. But we couldn't possibly justify playing the championship over the course of the condition it had been left in. It would have been an embarrassment to Bracknell Golf Club and, as a result, Riddle Council. This has also impacted upon our entry into our annual Widdle Open Golf Championships. Two years ago, we were oversubscribed to the championships with over 180 golfers playing in it, eight weeks before the event. This year, we have received only 50 entries to date, some six weeks prior to the event. The Widdle Open acts as a fundraiser for charities, uh, and the Widdle Hospital St John's being our main charity. And over the many years, the 33 years that the Widdle um, Open has been in existence, has raised tens and tens of thousands of pounds for a very, very worthwhile charity. Close to our heart, and I'm sure yours as well. I'm therefore astonished that Riddle Council are in a position of not being able to afford the development and investment the courses need, yet are in a position and feel that building another golf course on the Riddle is appropriate. I hope the Riddle Council recognise the future that leisure services such as our golf courses have for the health and well-being of the people of Riddle. That if a private investment firm can make the course profitable, then why can't Riddle Council? I most of all hope that Middle Council will not neglect the course to an extent that they are effectively closing the important municipal courts by proxy that have existed for so many years and provide such a service to so many golfers in the world. Brathwell provides a golf course, an area of outstanding natural beauty, an area for wildlife of a historical importance, an area for recreation, even if just walking the dock and contributes to improving air quality and reducing carbon footprints through the many old trees and it should remain as a properly maintained golf course for future generations that, like me, have been brought up at values and still in properly run golf clubs. Thank you, councillors. Thank you very much. Questions? Uh, and therefore they invigorate membership which is £34 a month 
is purely for God. Mr. Marsh, you did say that a lot of people are leaving Brackenwood and joining other clubs, even though sometimes it's more expensive. Have you any idea how much money do you think would be need needed to be spent on Brackenwood now to bring it back up to the standard you'd want to entice those members back? I can, I'm not a rookie, and I've, you know, I've got no experience in the finances of what it would actually take, what it would cost. I can only go on the report that I have, which, which you know, your council will actually. Yes, it is a lot of money, but then if you don't spend on a yearly basis to maintain something, that will always happen regardless of what I said you have. I have just one question, the same question yes. and I think you mentioned it all the way, but has God declined and it's so hard? Um, at Brattlewood? Yeah. Absolutely. Without a shadow of a doubt. The reason for that, one reason, one reason and that, the condition of the course. If the condition of the course was in better condition, as we've already heard evidence from our park, their, their club um, has been in decline. Now the condition of the course is, is being put back up to standard. Now they're seeing the total rebounds. They get an increase in membership, they get an increase in football on the golf course. We're seeing the opposite for the opposite reason. Yes, as an officer of the club, that's what you asked me. Yeah. What should, what's the council's involvement? Yes, it is. Um, I think the prices would go up. 
my concern is the same concern that our partners have got in that um, obviously we're members of Blackburn Golf Club, we've got steeped in history just like our partner in Warren um, but also, you know, from what we see from other municipal clubs, we are fearful that what will end up happening is if a private investment, investment firm comes in, they will effectively by proxy shut down Blackburn Golf Club and they can go over. Um, my also my also worry is um, you know if well it's not so much a worry, it's a going back to my old point, if a private investment firm can come in and is going to invest that money and therefore will want to make a profit, why are they not going council not doing it? Same thing. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you, Mr. Mark. I've got, a, I've got a, a, 
can serve on that. The reason being, um, what we want to do, we, we, we feel as though we should be consulted earlier because I think what we want to do is set a legacy that looks, there's a difference between a course and a club. It's, the club. it's, it's not like, it's not like um, a private club course. There's a course which is owned by one place, by one organisation, the Space World Council, and it's a club which is owned by the membership. So, so it's like a different format to the private golf club. So it's different. So it's unfair really to compare us with with um, with, with private golf clubs in that way, because the funding obviously as a result the funding changes as well. Um, so what we want to do is check the legacy of both the clubs. Now, best case scenario for us is, is obviously the council maintains their, their 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 control and the ownership of, of, of the Grange and the golf and the golf course. But reality, reality bites. I don't think that's, I don't think that's uh, feasible in the current situation, based on based on the finances of of Willow, the Willow Council, and also and also the potential for um, the, the development of course, the amount of amounts of uh, money and, and, and capital investment that would require. Um, as far as the lease agreed, uh, the facilities both clubs are protected. Uh, what we want is, what we want to happen is that both. As part of the lease agreed with the with the preferred provider, we want the current facilities within the clubs to be protected. I.e., we've got a we've got a bar, and that's why we've got a healthy fan balance. We're all volunteers, nobody gets paid at any sort of wage down there when they work down the bar or do anything else or clean the facilities. Um, and why it's important the council station should take place a little bit earlier is because once you've got a preferred provider, say this is what you can. That's not really fair enough because that's, that means we can't have, have a conversation about protecting what the club currently has. Now that the club bar is, is, is open three times a week for three or four hours. But anybody coming in, it's difficult to see, based on what's been said here this evening and previous, previous experience, it's difficult to see a, a situation where somebody can make money out of the course uh, without major investments. Um, and based on what Peter's colleagues have said from Manor Park and, and Brackenwood, the only way uh, an open up company would make money would probably be through the facilities. And certainly the Grange is a, is a, is a wonderful, it's a wonderful building. And uh, I'm using the example of Alan, for example. They they hold weddings, uh, all sorts, all sorts, all sorts of uh, functions there, uh, and the and the producer developed into a hotel. Now that's got a problem with us because well, our, our, our core, the core of the mainframe of our of our club is is the, is the bar and what happens out and that kind of And it's community elements to it as well. Um, it's it's not just about being a member of a club. It's being a, a member of a fraternity really. And we're there and we and we and we, um, and we enjoy each other's company. It's a lot more than, than just than just playing golf for a lot of those members. Um, what we, what we want to do uh, going forward, if we could, if we could um, establish some sort of protection for the clubs and their current facilities within any sort of agreement we have around leasing the, the club and with both the, the, um, the Grange and the building and also the, the course, we're more than happy uh, to work in partnership with a preferred provider to improve the standards of the course and the use of the Grange. Um, we do it as well. We are, we are the core of the of golfers who use the courses, we use courses and, and facilities as well. Um, I'd say to you to our members, we are our Omega 8 holders, and that's why it's important to, to make the point so that Omega 8 holders will continue, regardless, that's my understanding, regardless of what, what happens in the future, Omega 8 holders will be able to use their cards at the courses. And we will, we will help in any way uh, we can. Um, with regards to the course, I think Pat made the point earlier, but we need to maintain our front facilities to do that. Um, for, a club, for, a, for a club that's well over 100 years old, that was mm -hmm. separated to Centennial in 2011, but the oldest municipal on the on the world, and I dare say around, um, I, I assume around the northwest as well. So there's a lot, a lot of history there. It's where people access golf first and foremost when they, be, when they begin playing. And it's more, more than just golf clubs. I dare say that's the same kind of private and black the more than just the golf club idea around the private course, you go and you go and have a, have a, have a few things with your friends and off you go. It's not like that. Uh, municipal clubs are not like that, not run like that. 
I'm, I'm going to launch more for the membership and not to make money. That's my contribution. That's the sort of question. Good evening, Mr. Lewis. Good um, I'm confused. Yes. I'm not quite sure what you've come here for. What exactly are you asking for? Well, what I'm asking for is if the if if the courses and the facilities aren't going to be put out uh, to tender, and uh, those tenders are going to be given, prepared to buy them, for us to be given the opportunity to consult with the provider and the and protect the legacy of the, the golf clubs in their current format. So you're happy with what the council is suggesting? No, I'm happy. Well, 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 as I mentioned before, the ideal situation for me would be for the council to, to, to remain in, in managing both the golf course and facilities, but also with happy ever after. But I don't think the circumstances of the situation we're currently in realistically allows that. In fact, if, if that's what the council do, that's what I, that's what likes to happen. But reality, um, I'm pretty sure, uh, listening to conversations previously and around, around, the, around the room, that is a difficult scenario to see at the moment based on the current financial situation of the council. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Um, I, I don't know the warrants at all, so um, perhaps you, you, you could help me a little bit. You, you say you, the club invested £15,000 in, in the clubhouse facilities. Yeah. Can you tell me, do you actually own that clubhouse? No. Right. No, we, we invested in new sort of facilities. The, 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 we have we a lease with the, with the um, that was seven year lease in 2022 with the council. Uh, we invested in those facilities downstairs because it was quiet and uh, um, the regards to the council and the maintenance of it, we made, they, we, did, we did ask for the contribution but it, was, it wasn't forthcoming which is very We invested what was the members money in, in the facilities down in the club rooms. Uh, thank you. Um, councillors have been given a report about the, the state of two of the golf courts that we talked about tonight but we didn't get anything about the Warren. Um, we heard that, that, that um, Brackenwood is, is not, not fit for purpose, but we're told that Arrow Park is actually in much improved condition. What was the condition uh, of your golf course? The, the one that at the moment is in, is in very good condition, similar to the, similar to the uh, story being told by Arrow uh, Park. The, the one is a lot easier to manage and maintain. It's nine holes, it's a relatively small course, it doesn't need as much as many staff. Um, it's open all year round, very, very busy shut, it's normally snow and fog and doing things to stop people playing on it. Um, so it, it's a slightly different situation to uh, to our park and back and it's a lot less maintenance. And we said that, it was in a poor state of condition for a number of years, up until the last 12, 18 months, and there's two things that's happened there. First of all, we, we, we consult regularly with the great staff on an informal basis, so no, there's no formal um, consultation with, with anybody within the council um, and certainly the staff at the, the, at the facilities. They were excellent by the way, both both the um, both the green staff, which is which is only probably here is only one person, at the moment it's two, uh, and the and the staff within the shop as well. So we're really close with them to make, to maintain a good relationship and a good standard of um, of service and golf within within the facilities. But the, the bottom line is it's a lot easier to to, uh, to maintain because of the size of it. Uh, and uh, I'd like to suggest that the three plus of, of, um, of golfers is, is probably higher than, than all the other clubs as a result of it being open all year round. I wouldn't know, but that's just an opinion. Thank you. Brian? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Mr. Lewis, you stated just a few minutes ago that the bigger eight members will be able to use their membership no matter what happens in the future. I was a little bit surprised to hear that. Because, so really, my question to you is, what, what is that based on? The, the based on the council of banks at the start, I think. Yeah. Council of banks said that, correct me if I'm wrong, council of banks said that the start to mean that the real aid card can be, will be used in 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 the future, regardless of whether it's... Even if it goes to an average? Yeah. Like, even if it goes to another organisation? Yeah, it's like the track of one of the scams I've ever told. Well, it's, 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 it's,